Our guest today, a tremendous undefeated fighter, Sukhdeep Singh, who is poised to become the first Indian-born world champion. Joe Tilly's great Canadian sports show. Coming up! Our guest was born in Chikar, India. He now calls Ajax, Ontario home. He was a multiple Indian amateur champion. He went 5-0 and in the Super Boxing League. His professional record, 19-0 and with eight big knockouts. He is ranked top 15 in the world. He is a Canadian super welterweight champion, the IBA intercontinental middleweight champion, the IBF international super welterweight champion. This December, he can become the first Indian-born world champion as he fights for the IBO title. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program, Sukhdeep Chakriya Singh. Sukhdeep, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Very pleased, my friend. Very pleased. So let's let's start at the beginning. What talk, Tell us about growing up in India and how that might have led you to a career in boxing. Yeah, growing up in India. Um, so I was like. Um, uh, a crazy kid, you can say that, and uh, always get into trouble. And um, and there were uh, I heard like when I was like thirteen, I heard there was a academy in my village uh, for soccer and uh, boxing. I just went there to like to seek some trouble, and uh, I was just sitting down. I was sitting on the wall. I was watching these guys doing shadow box, and um, and I. Went inside and I I got into fight with a boxer, and um, and that was it. And uh, the 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 coaches were there and they got involved and uh, they're like, oh, you if you want to fight, just put on gloves. And, um, and here I am. So fighting was a thing right from the beginning for you. That was your yes, you sir. Know, your go to, right? Yes, sir. There was <laughs> there was a guy that always used to give me troubles, and uh, I I would just I would just after him and. Uh, and he was, I saw him there at the academy, and uh, we got into a fight, <laughs> and that was it. So, uh, well, who was inspiring you? And you know, when you're there watching the boxers train, and you decided that this is something you want to do, uh, did you have any boxers that inspired you? Was there anybody uh, in your life, or perhaps uh, you know, a more famous boxer that you knew about that that uh, you know made you think that this is something I really want to do? Yeah, I used to watch uh, Muhammad Ali growing up. Um, great boxer, um, great human being, and uh, great style. I used to watch him boxing um, on TV. And uh, there was another guy from Punjab. Uh, he uh, he was in Olympics. He uh, he he lost in quarterfinal, but he was like a top prospect in uh, from Punjab, where I come from, and. Uh, Growing and watching him uh, uh, competing in Olympics and uh, made me um, think like, oh, I can do that too. So Muhammad Ali and uh, Gurchan Singh, uh, one of those boxers that I grew up watching. Well, so you have a, a, a countryman, really, who uh, probably, I guess, a, a fellow from the same village, it sounds like, who, who went as far as the quarterfinals of the Olympics. Yeah. Same state. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. But uh, there aren't a lot of Sikh boxers, and why? Why do you think that is? It just is a uh, the amateur uh, thing is huge in India. Once you get into national level, the government will give you like like different type of jobs. Like they give you like a good ranking in army. They give you good ranking in police, in railways, and. Uh, so the boxers, once they get the opportunity to like um, gain like the the jobs and stuff, they'll just they'll just quit. Like and uh, like to get get the boxing into next level, and they don't they just get stuck into that that lifestyle, just like in police and army. And uh, I when I was when I became a national champion, I got offered in army, I got offered in police, and. Uh, I was like, yo, this is, uh, I got to do something. I got to, I got to, I got to do some more. This is not it. And, uh, that's why I, I, I talked to my team and, uh, and I, here I am. 
Yeah, you had you had greater goals in the sport of boxing. You wanted to stay with it. And, and so, how did you end up in Canada? How did you end up coming to Canada? So, growing up in Punjab, uh, in my village, Chakar. Um, so, like I said, there was an academy. And so, my dad, he was visiting there. Uh, my dad um, have a parents back home, and I have a family here. Um, uh, my dad, I call him. Um, so, Baldev Singh Sidhu is my dad. Here, back home, I have a family. My um, and this where I grew up. So he was visiting here. He um, so Balev Singh Sidhu. He um, he take care uh, take care of the academy uh, and stuff. So he was visiting there, and um, and uh, I think that time I won a um, school national championship. So he he was there, and he saw me doing shadow boxing, training, talking to kids helping them out and he came up to me and he was like um can i talk to your parents and i was like sure and um we i took uh, we went there uh we went to house and um baldev singh Sidhu, he was he he said to my mom and dad that i have a special talent and uh he wants me uh he wants the he wants to further training. Um, he wants me to take to Canada for his further training, so that way he'll he'll improve. Uh, he'll improve. So, so my parents were like, okay. Uh, and uh, my um, Balev Singh Sidhu, my dad, he was like, yeah, Sigdeep has a special talent. So, so my parents were, they were they were okay. They were like, okay, um, it's it's yours. So, that's how I ended up in Canada. Well, it was uh, you know. You know, this is, I guess, so this guy is like the guy who ran the academy is like your your second father. It sounds like you're saying, right? And he was, yes, sir. You know, bringing you to Canada was was uh, a move that he my felt was everything. In your, right, beautiful. So, I mean, that's that's what that's how you got here. Was it was it was it a difficult move to make? Was it like coming to Canada? Were you scared? Were you? Were you what was, what was happening? No, I wasn't. I wasn't scared or anything. Uh, it was a. I was. It was a new experience for me. And um, and I was ready for it, so it was no shock or any any cultural shock. It was nothing. So I had only one job: train, eat, sleep, and train, and uh, that's what I enjoy still. So you're hooked up in Canada with one of the best trainers in the business, uh, Ryan Grant, uh, one of the famed Grant brothers, Howard Notice, uh, the other great Grant brothers. Uh, tell us about uh, getting hooked up with RG and how that came about. So RG, um, so my cousin, my brother, my brother Nepsidu, uh, he knew RG outside of boxing, and um, he um, when I got here, he he already he already was talking to RG about me, and uh, right when I got here, and I started training with RG, and it was it was all family uh, family decision. They knew RG from a long time, and. Uh, and RG is a family friend, so that's why I, so, I ended up here with RG. This it was a perfect, uh, perfect marriage, if you will, the trainer fighter. If yeah, uh, so, you you had a great uh, uh, run there with the Super League experience. Was that after you admit RG or before? No, it was uh, it was a uh, met RG before Super Boxing League. So I okay. I came here when I was um when I was I think sixteen. The so Super Boxing League was when I was like twenty six. So I was going back and forth. I was training with RG here for like six months, going back home, competing in national, competing in other international tournament, and uh, I was in Indian national team for um, two thousand twelve to sixteen. So I was doing international tours. Uh, whenever I had time, I used to come here, train with RG, and um, yeah. So Super Boxing League. Um, so I was in a training camp um, with the Indian boxing team, and I and I heard there's a semi pro boxing league happening in India, in the New Delhi. So I was like, I I spent like five years uh, just here in India camp. I need to. I need to look because uh, I always wanted to be a pro boxer. So I was like, that's the, I, I talked to my team, my family, 
and um, they said, uh, okay, go for it. So I ended up uh, competing in Super Boxing League, and uh, they were like 94 top Indian boxers in in the in the league. So I got I got the I got awarded um, best boxer in the league. So that was the start of my pro boxing career. Pretty impressive. Uh, I know you went five and zero, I believe, in Super Boxing League. And uh, despite the my fact, thing is, I think you. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go so ahead, finish your thought. in the first fight of Super Boxing League, I I hurt my hand. I think I broke my hand in the first fight. So all like four fights, just I was just playing with my jabs, and just moving around, and uh, that got me like like playing just playing around. That it just people loved it. The way I moved there, and uh, people were like, "Oh, this guy, he's a, he's a champ." <laughs> so that was it. Well, you've got the punching power, no doubt about it. I've witnessed that mm-hmm. firsthand. So, in the beginning, you got that big right hand, and now you've broken your right hand. So you got to finish the Super League Boxing League basically with, with left hand, hand heavy, right? With one hand, and and, uh, and I think it also allowed you to or forced you in a position where you really kind of be a bit of a switcher too, right? Going south, yep, yep, and, and orthodox, yep, right? I, yep, I had to because uh, I had to switch stance and move around i had to think think about something else like what can i do to make my left hand a, a like a like a power hand so I, I had to switch so that's when i learned um a switching style it helped me right and and you do it well so now you're hooked up with the united promotions how did that uh, how did that happen so with rg rg is a good friend of tyler so we had a we had a meeting when I when I 2018 we sat down with RG Tyler and um, so RG knew Tyler um, long time so Tyler is like a he's like a it's like a family to me right like first time we met and uh, it wasn't like this like it wasn't it didn't feel like he's uh, like a different person he always. Tyler always felt like uh like he's uh he's in a family. So so from the beginning, um so being in a United Boxing promotion is like a I call it a United Family. So with RG, with the family, I ended up with Tyler with the United Boxing promotion and I'm and I'm lucky. Yeah, it's it is like a it's like a family, isn't it? Like you got fighters in United Promotions from all over the world yep. and, and- Tyler Buxton, as you mentioned, is, does a good job of bringing that family together. And, and uh, yeah, and things are really happening now here in, in Ontario. Like it's, it's just really has sure. taken off and as well as your career have, has. What's it like to have a guy like RG, who guy who has that all experience? What's it like to have him in your corner? You know, particularly with RG, like growing up with, uh, with RG, uh, first of all, he, uh, <laughs> he's an English teacher. He taught me so much stuff. Like, as a, Coming, coming from Punjab, coming from a village that nobody speak English there, and uh, coming here, and I had a so RG was a become a teacher, English teacher, and uh, uh-huh. he taught me a lot of thing, cultural thing, and um, he uh, as a coach, he's a uh, he's all he's he's great. As a brother, he always like when I whenever I need brother, he was always there. Whenever he's like friend he's he was always there so it's the bond is is it's amazing even in the ring outside the ring is uh it's a connection that he doesn't like when i'm fighting i just have to look at him that what he wants me to do and uh, i just it just clicks okay rg wow. he's thinking about that and um I, I i do it so it's it's the it's it's all here you have the connection me and RG have a, a good connection. Yeah, it's almost psychic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That connection between you guys. So, uh, so okay. Tell us about your training training regimen. What does it look like? Uh, I know we have some uh, video that we pulled from your Instagram. There's a, a variety of different yes, things sir. you're doing here, right? Tell us about your regimen. What's what's important for you as you get ready for your next fight? So training training wise, I I try to do six hours a day. I train. Six days a week, I do my strength and conditioning 
um, 10 o'clock till 11, 11.30. Then I go for boxing. Then, and then I have another training session with um, strength and conditioning um, with uh, Steve Hayden. So I have a so in the morning I train with the Dodge Ford, and then RG, and then uh, Steve Hayden. So I have like three different type, uh, three different coaches that I train with. So and that's the that's my everyday routine. I get up in the morning, ten o'clock, strength and conditioning. 11.30 till 1 o'clock is boxing. Then then I go with uh, Steve Hayden. Whatever he has planned for me, I, I do that. And uh, that's my that's my routine, training routine. Wow, that's impressive watching that uh, training video. A lot of stuff there. Like, the, what do you, what do you, like the hammer into the tire. I mean, that's, what, tell us about the benefit of, of that for you. Like, how do you feel coming hammer. out of that? Hammer and tire is uh, it's like in boxing you have to have uh, a, a snap you have to have explosiveness and snap. So with hammer, it just when you when you swing and you when you when the land, the hammer land is the, it's like a snap. So you're making your muscles ready, um, like building your muscle for the, right. for the explosiveness and snap and and your and your and your grip. Because it's a lot of um, the power going into the tire and it bounces back, so you have to grip it hard, and that's why it's it's, it's that tire and hammer training is pretty good. It, uh, I think boxers should um, try it like every day. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I can I can get that right. So when you throw the punch and you snap it out there, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. there's impact too. It bounce back and you yeah 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 yeah. Hundred percent. That snapped in the. Uh, it's good. Yeah, I like it. So okay, I've seen you fight a few times now, and and uh, really impre- impressed by your your control of the ring, your control and command of the ring. What's your objective when you climb through those ropes? Um. So when I when I go in the ring, um, I think about like my training. I I'm I think that if I need to throw continue punches for 10 rounds can i do it yes i can do it can i move around can i duck can i can i slip can i can i slip and punch yes i can so then i then i'll be like oh i'm ready and uh so i have a target here and um and i'm ready for it so that one when i think about that it gives me the strength and the power and the confidence so that's what I think every time I go to the ring and uh, one target and uh, I, just, I go for it. Right. So you're, you're mentally prepared. You're physically prepared, obviously, you're in tremendous condition. You take care of your body. And, and I know that. And, and it's like, uh, wow, it, it, it's all coming together, isn't it? Sir. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, nice win last year in Brampton. Uh, it was. I was at that fight. You were. Uh, you pounded on Luis Gutierrez, uh, a veteran mm-hmm. from Mexico, tough guy. He managed to go the distance, which surprised me because you were on him pretty much the whole fight. At that point, you were sixteen and zero. What do you learn from a fight like this, where with a rugged veteran who who goes the distance? Yeah. So. So uh, with the Luis, um, he he was a uh, like he knew how to. How to move around? How to engage? But he knew. My, I think he knew my style. That if if he comes forward, he's gonna get he's gonna get he's gonna get hurt. So he was uh moving back a lot. He was like trying to dodge my punches. So so I had to step forward to punch him. So he wasn't really punching going forward. He was moving back a little bit. So that that fight made me. Um, think that okay, if the guy's not punching, if if the guy's moving around, I have to step in. I have to throw more punches, and that's what I learned. And um, and right after I fought um, Argent, uh, the the number one Argentinian in, in his weight class, um, Godoy, and uh, from right. that fight, I so he he was doing the same thing, and uh. With all this fight, Luis, with all this fight, helped me get into the 
um, the Godoy fight, he was doing a little bit same type of style, moving back, um, doing his style, and uh, and I knew that okay, he's gonna do this, and I and I caught him with the right hand, and um, that fight helped yeah. me um, a lot. Yeah, that's that. That's the similarities. Let's let's roll that video, Vic. This is a big title bout, March of twenty twenty four at Pickering Casino. Uh, Gino Godoy, as you mentioned, for the IBF Internet International Junior Middleweight Title, round four of a scheduled troll round. You back him into the ropes and you set him up for a devastating right hand. And and it's like you just mentioned that, right? Cutting off the yep. cutting off the ring, backing him up in the ropes. What you learned from the fight previous to that uh, put you in yep. a position to end, end the fight early here. And uh, uh, how did that feel to uh, win that title? Um, it felt good. Um, because uh, like uh, right after Louis fight, I, me and RG, we we watched uh, Godoy fight and the way he was moving, and we we were doing continue those punches that I that I threw the right hand with the step, and uh, we were training like every day, almost every day. And um, when I when I saw when I saw the, the opportunity that okay he's he's opened up and I, I landed the right hand and uh, I was like okay the um it the training the the technique helps a lot so winning the title uh, um made me um gave me a little a confidence that like I can I can now I can step up now I can step like I can I can ready for the challenges. So right, yeah. the The title helped me um, gain the confidence. Right, and you got that confidence heading into the December twelfth fight against uh, Yuisa Lima of Angola for yes, the sir. IBO World Championship. Uh, what do you know about your opponent? Um, he's tough fighter, tough fresh, pressure fighter, and um, um, he he comes forward and um, like I said, um. Whoever comes forward uh, is, is 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 good for me, and uh, it's good for me to duck and dodge and uh, and a uh, and a counter punch. So it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be a good fight. Um, so I'm training uh, like I I didn't stop my training. I, I'm in a, I'm I'm already in a training camp. I just fired like twelve rounds just now and uh, with Kamal Russell, and uh, you know he's a pressure fighter. He's a he's a <laughs> He's a knockout uh, artist. He's a um, hit man. So we had uh, rounds with him. And um, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. No doubt. Yeah, I've, I've seen Kamal fight before too. Uh, tough dude. Jamaican guy. If I'm tough. Sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So, so, okay. So you're, uh, this is important. Um, any issues with weight heading into this fight? Uh, I'm always on weight. Um, I don't, so, this is what I think. Uh, when you want to be a champion, you gotta think like a champion. You gotta move like a champion. You not in. You gotta live like a champion. So it's not. It's not in the gym. Oh, when you're in the in the in the gym, you're a boxer. When you're outside, you have to keep that same energy outside. You have to. You have to think. Okay. I gotta. I gotta eat healthy. I gotta. Sleep, I gotta sleep on time. So this is this is my daily lifestyle. So I sleep good, I eat good, I train good, and uh, right after the fight, I don't, I don't stop. I just even like, I I, I stop boxing for for a week, but I still I'm selective. I'm still running. I'm still doing stretching. I'm I'm still doing something. So I don't gain, I don't gain that much weight. I like right now. I'm like after training, I was one sixty three, one sixty two. So it's not a it's not a big cut that I'm I'm gonna cut. Fighting a one fifty four, I can do it. I can do it tomorrow. So it's easy. It's easy weight cut. And it was never uh it was never a problem cutting weight. So it's mental. It's physical. Uh, do you deal with the spiritual side as well? Uh, how do you handle that part of it? Um, uh, yes, I do meditate. I do, um, I try to do, um, hour and a half, sometime an hour, just sitting down, eyes closed, think about nothing. 
And uh, then I think about my forefathers, my my warriors, my gurus, and um, this is uh, the source of my energy. Um, I I think about that all the time, and uh, yeah, meditation and uh, my forefathers, my, my warriors. This is this is my everyday routine: meditation and uh, and uh, where I come from. Right. And where you are for sure. I know you have tremendous support from the Punjabi community. Uh, how does it feel to carry with you? Is is there pressure carrying that uh, that support? Um, it's a privilege. Um, I can say, um, representing my my village, my people is. Uh, I love it. It just gives me a, a boost. Okay, uh, when I go in the ring, I see my people. And uh, it gives me energy. Okay, okay. I gotta, I gotta represent my village. I gotta represent my, my state, Punjab. So it gives me, it gives me power too. And uh, and I feel, I feel lucky. I feel, uh, I'm privileged that that I'm representing my community, my people. And you've been named the best pound for pound uh, Punjabi fighter on the planet. That must feel pretty good too. Yes, sir. I, I, um, um. So I. Whenever, whenever they announce the best pound for pound Punjabi boxer, and um, and it it gives me that one gives me power too. Uh, it makes me like okay, if they say you are pound for pound Punjabi fighter, I gotta train hard. I gotta show them what Punjabi pound for pound fighter is. So it's nice. I love it. Well, you know, I've been to a few of your fights, and I've seen that uh, that support. And and it's pretty pretty awesome. Um, what is the uh, your ultimate goal? What is the ultimate goal for Sukhdeep Singh? So my ultimate goal is um, to be um, undisputed world champion. I wanted to have all the belts, like Usyk, like mm-hmm. Franz Crawford, and um, that's my that's my ultimate goal to to have all the belts. Is there a fighter that that's out there right now that you you could see yourself uh, challenging in the not too distant future? Like one of the bigger names, maybe a Canelo. I don't know. Uh, is there somebody out there you're you're thinking this is the guy? I mean, like, that I'd like to take down. I mean, I, it, I mean, whoever has a title, I'm I'm ready for it. If I if I if, if my if my ultimate goal is to be to have the belts. You gotta fight a fight a champion. So whoever whoever's a champion, I have to fight him. And um, yeah, I don't. It doesn't really matter whoever. Uh, I don't. I don't really put on names. But just whoever has the belt, I'm I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready to take that belt away from you. So bring it on. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So uh, you you know, you talked about training six days a week. Uh, you you know you're really involved here. Your 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 life goal your life desire and, and everything else but do you have any hobbies do you is there anything else you do on the side to, so, you know side of boxing um so i do gardening um, okay i do um i do gardening i do um i'm into astronomy so i i look up um i look up in the sky um every night to see the stars and to see the positions of the stars is i um is it just i don't know it just really um makes me um it gives me something that when you look up the star, look up in the sky and the stars and the universe um it's just amazing and uh so astronomy gardening and uh uh i have two dogs i have two ridge bags playing I love playing with them. Um, spent I spent time with the my dogs, and uh, that's it. That's my that's my hobby. And I watch Rich movies Jack. whenever I have time. Yeah, <laughs> Rich Wax. Yeah, beautiful dogs. Beautiful dogs. Yeah. Uh, so here we are. So uh, Stargazer, Gardener, Warrior, and uh, yes, Sick Deep Singh, soon to be hopefully world champion. Um, we we part we are partnered with a group here uh, called uh, Believe Become Be You. It's a mentorship program right. for kids from 10 to 17. 
What's what's the mm-hmm. message that you have for any kids who might be struggling to find their way? Oh, uh, when I when I look into myself growing up, seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, um, I used to write things on the wall in the bathroom, in the bedroom that okay, I'm gonna be a champion. And so I was writing down my goals. Okay, in two years, I want to be there. In five years, I'm going to be there. So I still, like, when I go home, I still have those writing with the with the, with the marker that I'm going to be a champion. I still have that. So my message is to all the kids, make a goals. Make, like, two, three, four, five goals. And uh, write it on the wall, maybe in the bathroom. When you get up in the morning and you look at the goals that that you want to achieve, it's gonna give you something. It's gonna give you strength. That it's gonna keep you keep you aligned. Okay, this is my goal, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be focused. So so all the kids out there, just set your goals and work hard for it, and then nobody will stop you. Nothing will stop you. Just keep going. Don't stop. Awesome advice. Awesome advice. So, okay, here we go. December 12th. Once again, you're fighting for the IBO world championship against Luisa Lima of Angola. Um, and also on the same card, Sarah Bailey defense her WBA strap, uh, incredible mm-hmm. shows here in Southern Ontario. Uh, is it the Pickering casino or is it the Toronto casino? This time? It's the Toronto casino at, uh, it's okay. the Woodbine casino. Yes. Sir. Right. Right. Beautiful venue. And uh, yes. well, good luck to you, champ. We're, we'll be watching for you. And uh, thank you. And we're uh, thank we'll bring you. that belt home. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Thank you, thank you. So well, much. thanks. Thank you for Th- thank you for having me thank on the show. Uh, you are a um, great personality. I heard a lot about you, like back in the days. And like like RG was telling me, like Joe, he was the one of the top top guy and uh, who follows up boxing. And uh, thank you for having me on your show. My pleasure, Sigdeep, and thank you for taking this time to join us. I know you had to do some, get some sparring in today, and you got 12 yes, rounds, which is good with Kamal, and that's pretty awesome. Yes, it sounds like you're, you're going to be ready on December 12th. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. When thank we come so back, much. should Tyson be allowed to fight Jake Paul and more? Back after this. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. The only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life. Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. Because he's 58 years old, should Iron Mike Tyson be allowed to fight Jake Paul? Well, this is no ordinary 58-year-old. This is a man who's climbed into the ring 58 times against some of the great heavyweights of our era, and he has absolutely destroyed most of them. Have you seen this guy working out? He is a machine. He is focused. He is driven. He is going to knock Jake Paul into next week. The real question should be, should Jake Paul be allowed to fight Mike Tyson? Parents, what's the biggest fear for kids 10 to 14? A future they think they can't handle. At Believe Become BU, we know confidence in the future is a habit we can build. Our course doesn't just prepare kids for the future. It seeds them with skills they will use now. For a limited time, the I Believe in Me Foundation is offering the first 1,000 kids and their parents one year free access. This priceless opportunity will save you over $2,000. This isn't just a course. It's a journey in developing life-enhancing skills that will grow with your child, fostering gritty minds, creative futures, and better bonds. Get signed up now at BelieveBecomeBU.com. That's BelieveBecomeBU.com.
Hi, I'm Joe Tilly, and I want to tell you about the painting pros. Patrick and his crew recently came into my home and they painted the walls, they added some color. It's fantastic, and I can't be more satisfied with the work they did. That crew is tremendous. They were professional, they were courteous, they were respectful, and they did a fantastic job. Look at that. Look at that color. I just can't stress enough how satisfied we truly are with Patrick and his crew. For all your painting needs, go with the pros. And we want to thank all the folks who make this show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all around great people. We highly recommend them all. Thank you for your support of Canadian sports. A reminder that the show is available on iTunes, Spotify, Breaker, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Also, check out the show on YouTube. All of our past great shows are on there, clips and shorts. Like and subscribe. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a darn thing. All right. Thanks once again to Sikdeep Singh for being in the program. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. Let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family in your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did. 905-686-5678. MNP, a leading Canadian national accounting tax and business accounting firm. MNP proudly serves and responds to the need of their clients in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, MNP provides a collaborative, cost-effective approach to do business and personal strategies to help people and organizations to succeed across the country and around the world. With local offices in Oshawa, Mississauga, Burlington, and more, their team is here to support you. Visit mnp.ca today to learn more. Rooted in 60 years of tradition, Sleepy Hollow is a private golf club with a friendly community of members just minutes from Toronto. With mature trees and rolling fairways, Sleepy Hollow provides a challenging and enjoyable experience for passionate golfers. Enjoy great golf, amazing dining, and a picturesque patio second to none. Visit SleepyHollowCountryClub.com. Joe Tilly here. My wife Penny Claire and I recently took an amazing trip to Egypt and Jordan with Trip Oppo. And here are our top 10 must-dos. Last but not least, we relaxed at a luxury resort and took a dip in the famous Dead Sea. This beautiful resort was a perfect way to cap off our incredible adventure in Egypt and Jordan. After days of exploring ancient ruins and bustling markets, it was wonderful to just kick back, put on a little mud, and soak up the sun by the Dead Sea. Oh, I almost forgot to mention the amazing cuisine in Egypt and Jordan. Don't forget to try the delicious local food like mouth-watering Egyptian barbecue. And the best part is that our trip up a tour includes almost all of the meals so you can indulge in the local cuisine without worrying about opening your wallet. I would highly recommend that you book your next trip through Trip Oppo. Call them today. Guests on Joe Tilly Sports receive a gift certificate from Classica Imports. Top of the line, imported men's clothing. Check out the Classica Essential Collection now. Go to shopclassica.com.